I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to bring the May International Update for our ministry around the world. Over the last few months, I've asked you to pray a number of times for the transition in international leadership, which we're going through at the present time. I retire officially from this role in August of next year, 2013. The process is well developed to find my successor. And next month, the nominations committee will bring two or three uh, nominated candidates to meet our International Executive Committee. That's the next step in the process. And I would just very much appreciate your prayers once again on a regular basis for this very important transition. Last month, I mentioned the wonderful breakthrough for Logos Hope with the promise we had of a challenge grant of three million US dollars. The brother making this grant is going to give one dollar for every two dollars that are given. The last uh, 10 days, two weeks have been wonderful days for the ship ministry. I was just calculating before I sat down exactly how much money we've seen come in for the dry dock and for the power up project. I'm not exactly sure of the figure, but I know it's gone over three million US dollars just in the last uh, 10 days to two weeks. So I really want to thank you for your prayers and for those who have contributed. We've still a significant way to go and that uh, challenge grant continues. So please pray and if you're able to make any contribution to this uh, vital part of the ministry, it will be deeply appreciated. Each month I try and mention a critical job need. I want to mention one which might surprise you somewhat. Uh, we're looking for a cooking assistant in the 200 year old mill, which is our headquarters in OM Germany. It's also the headquarters of our ship ministry. OM Germany is a very motivated team, motivated to serve guests who come to the mill from all over the world. They host, for example, our GO conference when all the newcomers joining Operation Mobilization go through their orientation. We're looking for someone willing to work with a master chef to provide three meals a day in the mill there. You probably never thought of cooking assistance as a mission opportunity, but it certainly is. It's a critical need for us at the present time. Anyone interested can email me, peter.maiden at om.org, and I'll pass on your application to the right person. I don't often mention the nation of Ukraine in these international updates. A nation where the church is growing quite rapidly, but it's a nation of desperate poverty. One in three people in Ukraine live in desperate poverty. Wayne from Australia moved to this country um, 12 years ago. He moved to a little town uh, near Kiev and uh, a few years later, they had enough people who'd turned to faith to officially register a church. When he looked out on his church members, he saw that every one of them was unemployed. They started a very simple Bible school, and uh, they have also begun two businesses, a biodiesel and mushroom growing project. Uh, Wayne said, words on their own in Ukraine are totally inadequate. Faith must be seen to result in works. It's a day of opportunity for the church in Ukraine in days of great need. Pray for our teams there and for fruit from the proclamation of God's word. In March, we sent uh, uh, 20 students in five teams to different corners of Siberia in Russia. They went for 10 days of practical mission experience. Here's the report from one team who visited a hospital for drug addicts and alcoholics. All the people in the hospital either went there voluntarily or were sent by desperate parents who just couldn't handle the family situation. We gave a seminar on HIV, AIDS and drug addiction, and uh, the 
people shared their testimonies. One was himself, a former drug addict. He says, drugs led, leads to death very quickly, but God freed me. The students invited the patients to pray with them, and three prayed immediately, asking God's forgiveness for their sins and asking for his salvation. A nurse stood up saying that she felt the presence of God in the room. Another nurse left the room in tears. We do thank God for these incredible opportunities we often have in Russia to minister to addicts and alcoholics. All the children of our workers in Moldova have a children's Bible, but the vast majority of Moldovan children have never seen such a book. The children in Moldova, the children of our workers, club together to start buying Bibles for Moldovan children. They got involved in fundraising projects and they've been distributing Bibles to the children of Moldova. Here's Hannah's testimony. We went to a village called La Plug, where we talked to over 50 children at their school. Each family was given a Russian children's Bible because everyone in that village speaks Russian. On the Orthodox Christmas, they visited another village to give out Bibles. Lots of people squashed into someone's house and we had a service with songs and poems and preaching. We gave out Bibles, Christmas presents and sweets to the children. Thank God for our own kids who are themselves getting a heart for mission and reaching out to the children of Moldova. That's just a few of the highlights of our ministry in this past month. And so on behalf of 6,100 workers in more than 110 countries, I want to thank you for your continuing prayers for us. And I look forward to seeing you or talking to you in a month's time. Thank you.